Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So yesterday, The Athletic dropped a pretty spicy list when they dropped a U23 player ranking based on who they think is going to have the best careers, not who are the best players right now. So it's basically the 2020 draft and on no 2019 guys, no Jack Hughes on this list. So I thought we'd go through it. I saw a couple like screenshots of it circulating. So I know where like some players are. I know who number one is obviously, spoiler alert, it's kind of a dard, but I thought it'd be a fun idea to go through it now and and see because I've, I've done lists like this I've kind of projected into the future like this and see if I agree with them and just how outlandish maybe some of their takes are and bold because the athletic although I, I really like their hockey coverage they definitely have some interesting takes from time to time so yeah Bedard Stutzla Celebrini top the list I I don't disagree with that I think for my U23 I think it was exactly in that order maybe Celebrini over Stutzla let's get into it yeah 22 years or younger so, yeah, it's no 2019, guys. The cutoff is sep September 15th for the draft. Connor Bedard, Tim Stutzla, Mack and Celebrini. Straightforward, Bedard, no doubt one. Stutzla's interesting. Maybe you could, maybe you have him lower considering he wasn't that explosive this year compared to when he had 90 points and uh, 39 goals in his third season in the NHL this year. Was a bit of a down year. I still think that he's a franchise superstar kind of talent. And con considering the other guys we're going to see in this list, he's so NHL proven ahead of those guys that I think the second spot makes sense. Although I think Celebrini has a higher potential. I think there's other guys with higher potentials. We've seen Stutzla have a legit, like, top 25 offensive season in the entire NHL already. They go Fantilli. Okay, Carlson at least is number five. I have that flipped uh, when I was scouting. During the 2023 draft process, I personally had Fantilli over Carlson, but I think after their rookie years, they're still both great. They're going to be, they're, they deserve to be. They're top five guys. They deserve to be in this top five, but no Mitchkov. I just realized that, but I have Carlson. Luke Hughes over Matt Bay Mitchkov. That I cannot get behind. That is shocking. No Wyatt Johnston yet either. I would have Wyatt Johnston top seven for sure. But yeah, I like Luke Hughes. Let's see what the fucking little blurb says. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he had 47 points as a rookie, but I, I don't know if he has the two-way game to justify ahead of a guy like Matt, Matt Faye Mitchkov. Artem Leshinov, Matty Beniers, Carter, yeah, come Chuck. I did see this one beforehand. That is crazy. This is from Corey Pronman. He had Yakim Chuck as like his number three or number four prospect in the 2024 draft. I was obviously lower on him. Still believes in Matty Beniers. That's interesting. Again, if he can get back to his 20, 2023 form, I don't hate his placement here, but I would definitely have, again, Wyatt Johnston ahead of him in a 2021 redraft as well as other guys. Anton Salayev at 11, Wyatt Johnston at 12. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Putting Yakimchuk or Salayev ahead of Johnston, considering what we saw Johnston do at 20 years old, that is wild. I, I that that just there's just too much uncertainty with the 2024 guys. Jake Sanderson, 13. He almost cracked my top 10 list of U23 guys that I would build a franchise around. I think Sanderson's going to be a legit number one. Lafreniere ahead of Slavkovsky. I can see where they're coming for that. I personally would have Slavkovsky over Lafreniere. I think Lafreniere, after the season that he did did have, deserves to be top 20 on a list like this, though. Very solid season by him. Zeev Boyum. Ivan Dimitrov all the way at 17. Yeah, I, I would have Ivan Dimitrov top 10, especially if they're going to put, again, like Salayev, Yakumchuk ahead of Dimitrov. That is a little bit head-scratching. But we move on. Mason McTavish, I'm pretty high in Mason McTavish. Maybe not going to be the number one center in Anaheim, but he should be a solid, like, 70 to 80-point guy. Owen Power, Will Smith, Berkeley Cadden, fair, perfectly fair and reasonable. Will Smith, top five prospect in hockey. Berkeley Cadden, top like 20 guy for me. Beckett Seneca, I'm not as high on him as others. He would be probably entirely off this list when you look at the guys that have already had NHL track records compared to Seneca, who I had like 13th on my draft board. Logan Cooley, I would move Logan Cooley up some spots. I think he should be like borderline top 15, considering at what, 20, 19 years old, he just had a 44 point season. So silky smooth. Seth Jarvis, I think you have to move up. He just had what, 67 points, 33 goals, 34 assists, while being great defensively. Seth Jarvis should be top 15 on a list like this. I don't think that's controversial. Shane Wright, Byfield, also I think you should move up. They're really betting on some of these guys' potentials that haven't even seen the NHL. Lucas Raymond, I get called a Lucas Raymond hater. He almost made my top 10 of U23 guys. Logan Stan Cooper. Yeah, I'm very high on Dylan Gunther. I'm surprised they have him this high. I would also have him in this range. Zane Perrick. Pavel Minchikov should be higher considering the fact of what he did in his rookie year as a 2022 draftee. He should definitely be higher. Lundell and Faber, I would also move up. Maybe, maybe I'm just, there's just so many people that I'm forgetting. 
or that like they maybe oh, I Lindstrom's I capitalized, but Caden Lindstrom in terms of potential. That's weird, dude. Again, Yakum Chuck ahead of Caden Lindstrom. I just, I can't get behind that. Maddie Nyes I think is a little bit too high in the list like this. Definitely taking Lindstrom. I'm definitely taking Dickinson over him. Mark Simone Nemich all the way down at 42nd, man. After the rookie year that he had, what do you have? Like 20 points in 60 games, great underlying numbers. Former second overall pick. What are we? Brant Clark at 40. Dude, what? That is crazy. T. Jaginla. Solberg over Ryan Leonard. I get Solberg is just like a beast, like six foot three physical beast, but ahead of a guy like Ryan Leonard, ahead of a guy like Yurichek that I'm still very high on, went fifth over or fifth or sixth overall. Yeah, sixth overall in 2022. Korchinski, fair. Braden Schneider that high is pretty wild. Kent Johnson, I don't really know what to think of him at this point. If he gets some burn in Columbus, maybe he'll turn it around, but not too impressive of a second year. Wallstead, goalies are tough. Yeah, I, I guess like they're factoring in position with this because Askarov and Wallstead are like the consensus number one and number two goalie prospects in the NHL. Dawson Mercer, constantly in should be higher. He was my number six guy in the 2024 draft. ASP all the way down at 59 next to Drys, uh, Drysdale. Caden Gooley, solid. Zach Benson's got to be way fucking higher, man. 30 points in 71 games as an 18-year-old. William Eklund. Oh, my. that Those, that's, I can't get behind that. William Eklund, 45 points on a dog shit San Jose Sharks team. Cutter Gauthier, 65th. This is interesting, man. Some of the guys that they had top 30, but these, like, oh, my God. Danilo Yurov. Tearing up the KHL, he should be higher. Ryan Bacher, you're going to notice another uh, Montreal Canadiens defenseman has not been named yet, and his name is Lane Hudson. That's going to lead to co some controversy. Adam Yurchek, Ray, uh, Ray Koff, Cole Eisenman at 75. He should be top 20. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Michael Branson, Nigard, um, Connor Zari, Cole Sillinger. I think Cole Perfetti should be ahead of Cole Sillinger at this point, considering the fact what both of them did. This uh, Perfetti is a year older, though. Luke Evangelista, Brad Lambert. What is this? The top 100? Lane Hudson, 87th overall. Montreal Canadiens fans, let me know what you think of that. Pronman is a hater. Hator. He'll force, uh, I think he has so much offense, but I need to prove that he can play at even strength. I disagree. I respectfully disagree. Jimmy Snuggerud, Brindley. I'll probably move them up a little bit. Ridley Gregg. Oh my God. What is this? Like a top 200? Just, I'm just going to just steam through this. Dylan Holloway, too high. I'm high on Noah Ostland. <laughs> We're just rolling through this at this point. I'm seeing Easton Cowan should be a little bit higher on this after what he did this year uh, in the OHL. Michael Hage, Logan Melu. Damn, they, they put a lot of fucking work into this. Owen Zellweger should be higher. I get that he's undersized, but he's an offensive freak. He was like second in the entire AHL in goddamn points per game by a defenseman this year. Will Cooley. Rangers legend. Denton Matejchuk all the way down at 137th. He was like my number eight, 19 or 20 prospect. That's a little wild. Matt Savo, damn, they're really low on Matt. Matt oh, Quinn and Musty. Come on, man. Quinn and Musty got to be higher. McGrody at 147. They had Braden Yeager at like 103. Interesting. Sebastian Cosa, they're not very high on. And 155. That's a weird one to kind of end off on. But we end on an Islander. Marcus Gidloff. Interesting list, to say the least. I think the, the, it's definitely out there. It's definitely unique. It's not the consensus like maybe some other sites. But hey, The Athletic, they're a pretty good site. Let me know in the comments. What do you think about this? Who is way too high? Who is way too low? I'll be seeing the next one. Maybe I'll make a similar list to this. It won't be 155 goddamn names, though.